what to do YouTube. In this video, I'm going to go over my stock portfolio, how it's been performing since my last update, and some tips I have for you if you're going to get started investing. Let's get straight into it. So if you guys watched my last update video on my portfolio, my portfolio continues to grow pretty rapidly at a pretty solid growth rate. Obviously, the NASDAQ keeps going up, the S&P 500 keeps going up. But this just really goes to show that just investing your money into the stock market, even during the down years, even when the market's pulling back 30, 40%, again, it's typically a good thing. Lots of people last year were saying, no way guys, I should invest my money into bonds, get you know a guaranteed 4% return. Like I talked about in my last video, if you're below the age of 30, you know, 40, and are able to put a little bit of risk on the table, obviously being able to make the return I made this year doesn't come without any risk we saw last year. You know, you go through the whole cycle of emotions, Back when the market was at 52 week lows last year in October, I deleted M1 Finance a few times. It's pretty hard to look at. But now when you make it to where you are now, back at all time highs across the board on the market, you know, all that hard work, sticking to your investment plan, sticking to your strategy, um, it really just starts to come to fruition here in times like this. So without further ado, we're getting to M1 Finance. I'll give you guys some tips if you wanna get started investing. So now we're looking at M1 Finance. I won't spend too much time going over all the holdings or anything I did that in the last video. But I made the first video around here, around June, when I first passed $100,000. So you can see I'm making this video December 16th. The account's now valued around $130,000, uh, about $250 in buying power. So since that video, I've probably invested another ten dollars to $12,000 and the market's returned another $18-ish uh, $1,000. I think this graph alone just really speaks to you know, why dollar cost averaging, why always buying into the market is really the, the best thing you can do. I'll pull up the NASDAQ 100, S&P 500 in the next part of the video. But you can see here, if you guys have been in the market actively trading, so July, the market started pulling back, made the portfolio hit almost $100,000, bounced back up. Because the whole time you're always constantly adding money into the market, you can see the portfolio portfolio, I mean, is just always kind of stair-stepping and flatlining. So even as the market pulled back here, you know, late October before before you found the bottom, my stock portfolio really just kind of flatlined around $100,000. And even this whole time, because you're always dollar cost averaging the market, even those dips where you can get stocks at lower prices, um, it really pays off because now since late October to where you are now, December 16th, just in that whole stretch, it's been about a $26,000 return. It's really been on autopilot this entire time. I just invest a couple hundred dollars in each week, $500 to be exact. And then I don't really look at this uh, portfolio at all. Um, so you guys can see here, outside of selling NVIDIA, like I mentioned in my last video around March, I haven't sold any stocks in this account. I don't plan to sell any stocks in this account until I really have to, like I'm trying to buy a house or retirement or anything anything along those lines. Um, like I mentioned, I have other retirement accounts just strictly for tax purposes, but this one is my main primary account I'm always investing money into. It's my you know biggest focus in, in funneling money into this account through trading and stuff like that. So I won't go over everything too much again, but the one stock, like I mentioned, I added was ARM. I mentioned this in Discord, I added ARM. But other than that, all the holdings are exactly the same. Um, they're just continuing to go up, working out pretty well. You can obviously see tech faves. It opened up the year at $21,000 in this piece of my portfolio. Now it's going to be ending the year on 60000 And just from the market gains alone, it's, re it's returned about $23,000. Again, it's not really rocket science the way I invest. I just buy companies I think have good potential that perform well over time. Arm, Roblox, and Shopify are really the only quote unquote moderately risky names I have in my account. Obviously names like Tesla are a bit more volatile. AMD is volatile. But all these names have been pretty much proven to grow over the course of time. They give you solid returns and there's really nothing to be too worried about. Obviously in 2022 when the market pulls back, you're gonna see some you know red in your portfolio. As long as you're investing in good companies that are proven over decades and decades of time, the outcome is usually pretty good. So I won't spend, again, I won't spend too much time going over all the stocks I picked. Just watch the last video for that. But I just want to go over to my my activity in my account. So one thing I see lots of people talk about, they're like, especially last year, people are scared to buy into the market. And now the, the market's all time highs, they're not trying to buy into the market. Something you have to keep in mind, especially if you have a longer time, a time horizon, is that the prices you're looking at right now in the stock market, are gonna look like bargains in the next 10, 15, 20 years. So that's the way I try to stay focused on my investing goals and my time horizon. So obviously people might be scared to quote unquote buy into the market when SPY is at you know, 480, when Qs are at 400. But if you think about where you were back in 2020 before the market crash when Qs were at like 260, and now we're talking about QQQ at 400, um, it's a much different perspective, and I swear many people would have, you know, killed to buy Qs at 260. Obviously, looking in the past, you know, buying before a market crash may be scary, but now that we're looking out, 
as Qs are up nearly like 60% from that level, um, really just puts everything into perspective and how that buying at higher prices, if you have a long time horizon, I mean, usually pays off over the course of the 20 years. So looking at my account, again, I just have everything set up. So it automatically pulls money out of my bank account. I don't have to manually look at it. Um, it does everything automatically. So you can see here, I'm gonna flip through a few more pages. So every Monday I deposit $500, then Tuesday through Thursday I deposit their $15. So on this account right now, I'm currently investing about nearly $600 per week into the stock market. Even as the market is that high as it may sound scary, um, people may be you know, a little bit kerfluffled that you're investing, but again, they don't have the 10 to 15 year time horizon like I do. So I'm fine and I'm comfortable with buying at these prices. If the market goes down lower, I'll still do the same thing. I'll still keep buying at lower and lower prices. And I'll still keep buying at higher and higher prices because my mindset isn't for the next year and a half. It's for the next 10 to 15, just to, just have to keep reiterating that. You can see here, this whole stretch here, you know, this is November, October, same thing, nothing ever changes. You know, same thing, October, September. Uh, you know, obviously a few bigger deposits as the market was pulling back here. So you can see it's been the same thing the entire year. I switched it up a little bit. So I was I went from $200 on Mondays to and I was doing $50 per week. I was also investing in my Roth IRA. But since I maxed out my Roth a few uh, a few months ago, I switched to investing all my money in this account. So that's why the uh, you know, dollar amounts are a little bit different. But I was still investing upwards to $400 a week at the time. So you can see here, again, it's been the same thing the entire year. You know, I don't care where the market's at. Everything's just on autopilot for me. If the market goes down, I'll buy stocks. Market goes up, I'll buy stocks. I don't care where it's at. Again, you have to have that long time uh, time horizon, which I do. So I'm comfortable with buying stocks where they are right now, hoping they appreciate the next five to 10 years but because I'm buying good companies and companies that have good fundamentals and companies that have good leadership in charge of them. So now I just wanna jump over to the S&P 500 on Trendspire. So like I was talking about M1 Finance, this whole stretch here, when the SPY S&P 500 was pulling back from 460 to 410, um, my stock portfolio, I'll put a picture up if you guys don't recall, my stock portfolio just kind of went sideways. You can see here, you fell 50 points on SPY nearly, and my portfolio is still flatlined. And you may be wondering, how is that? Again, just comes back to dollar cost averaging and always putting money into the stock market. I don't care where the market is, I'm gonna keep doing the same thing. So you can kind of negate the effects of downside because you're always funneling money into the stock market on a consistent basis. So yes, even as the stock market fell 10% from highs, again, the portfolio just kind of flatlined. Then once you got this big breakout, you found the bottom in late October. Again, you saw, you guys saw in the picture, my M1 finance account has gone vertical and now there's really nothing to worry about. You know, nothing's ever gonna change my investment you know, strategy. I do the same thing every single day, every single month, every single week. I'm gonna invest the same, you know, set amount that, you know, that fits into my budget, that fits into my planning, and I just do what's comfortable for me. Now, investing $2,000 in the market for some people may sound like a lot, and it may sound like a little to some people. Again, everyone's on different playing fields, everyone's doing their own thing. Just do what works into your strategy, what works into your take home amount, and just try to invest any, any amount of that. Especially when I first started investing, I I wasn't making a lot of money. Um, I was making maybe $30,000 a year, if that. I was still taking maybe like 15, 20% of each paycheck. So that comes down to like $100 a week. I was still just playing what I could in the stock market. And now that I'm at the point where I can put $500 plus a week in the stock market, those returns will obviously be bigger, but it comes at obviously more risk, risk that I'm comfortable with. You know, if the market goes down like it did from 2021 to 2022, you have to endure more risk if, it, if the market goes down and goes through a downturn but always having a consistent investment strategy, always putting money in the stock market. It's a usually a winning strategy if you pay, if you invest in good companies and ETFs. So now I just wanna jump in how you can get started investing if you haven't, or you're looking to learn more about investing. So if you're looking to get started investing, here's what I would do if I was in your position. Number one, pick a broker that has some kind, that has some type of automatic investing or robo investing. So I would see a platform like M1 Finance I like a lot because it requires me to not check on it constantly, it does everything automatically. Now, if I had to constantly go into my broker, you know, manly withdraw $500 from my bank account and do everything, I'd probably be less willing and it'd be kind of a chore, a chore for me to do each and every week. But because M1 Finance has all the tools built for me that can do it all automatically on its own, it makes it really easy to stay on a set investment, uh, investment schedule. And even if the market's looking pretty you know, scary at some days, it automatically does everything for me pulls money in my account, and then just does all the investing for me based on the percentages I have allocated each stock and ETF. Makes investing as simple as possible. You don't have to be a stock picker. You can just pick ETFs and then automatically invest in ETFs each and every week. And if one, something like QQQ gets overweight in your portfolio, it will automatically invest into the lower weighted stocks. So looking at this, you know, M1 Finance really quickly one more time. So you can see, I have a large percentage of VTI in my account in the ETF section but obviously QQQ has outperformed the VTI pretty drastically. So because QQQ is outperforming, 
it will automatically invest more money into VTI and try to balance these out. You can see actual versus target. So I want 65% of my money in this account going to VTI, um, 20 going to QQQ. So it will automatically balance that all out for me without having you know manually sit there, do the math by myself. It automatically weights everything properly. And once again, it is everything complete in autopilot and requires no extra thinking or stress, you know, picking out your stocks and buying stocks, which can sound daunting to some people when you first start. The second thing I do if you're looking to get started investing is staying off social media, S&P 500 on the monthly time frame. So like I mentioned in the last segment of the video, um, people, everyone who bought SPY in let's say 2007, the dot-com bubble at 151 um, at highs, yeah, they may have been scared at the time if they didn't dollar cost average at all and just watch the stock market fall in front of them. But then looking back, when, when SPY got back to 156, if you didn't buy back into the market for the next 10 years, 10, 20 years, you can clearly see this was March 2013. SPY has never been back to the $100 region, the $200 region, the $300 mark, pretty much at all. So yes, while buying at highs, you can see we're at highs right now on SPY, can be scary, it can be daunting. The stock market historically over time goes up, especially if you're investing in ETFs like SPY, QQQ, you know, VTI, um, VUG, stock, uh, ETFs like that that track the you know broad market. They're gonna historically go up over time. And if you have a 10 to 20 year time horizon, you're probably most likely going to get a positive return. Go, I'll pull up the charts. If you've held, you know, a broad market ETF for 20 years, it's never yielded a negative return at all. Um, if your time horizon was 20 plus years, and that's why I just keep buying. I don't care where the market is. If we look back, let's say hypothetically, the market just continues to go up for the next five, 10 years. People will be looking back at this video, December 16th, 2023. You're like, you know, you know, SPY was at 470, but looking back when it's at 650, hypothetically. You know, I should have bought more SPY at 470. So yes, buying things at highs can sound scary if you listen to social media and follow social media. It'll probably discourage you a few times, especially if you guys have been to the channel. Back when SPY was down about, you know, 20% from highs from 470 to 360, it kind of got discouraging at times listening to people saying I should buy bonds and the market will never bounce back and the market's gonna keep going down lower. But I followed my investment strategy and what do you know, it paid off in just less than a year. Number two, just stay off social media, stick to your investment strategy and just have a long time horizon. So the third and final piece of advice I have for you guys is just staying diversified, having a plan, and don't get over leveraged in the stock market. So if you guys aren't aware, you can just buy things like ETFs, like VTI, VUG. I really like Vanguard ETFs because they have the low expense ratio. You can buy things like SPY or QQQ, but the, the expense ratio is a bit higher than I would like. So that's why I don't really focus on them because someone else is managing your money and buying into, and buying into the market with, those, uh, with the funds you uh, provide them with. So I personally like Vanguard ETFs. You can just come over here to investor.vanguard.com, see all the ETFs that Vanguard has to offer from you, see which one works best. Again, I really like VTI. Some people like VU, V-O-O, another S&P 500 um, ETF that tracks the market. Um, it's just an easy way to stay diversified. If the market goes up, you're just matching the market um, and you're not really trying to outperform the market, especially in my like retirement accounts, like I mentioned in previous videos. I really only buy VTI and a couple other ETFs like VUG um, that just track the, the track the NASDAQ 100. I don't buy individual stocks for retirement because again, I'm just, my retirement accounts for them 59 and a half. So I have about another 34 years to get there. So if I'm just staying consistent, mashing the market at 10, 8% a year, I'll be fine for retirement and be a millionaire tax-free. And that goes back into having a plan. I will see if you're making like a couple thousand dollars a month and you have bills, a car payment, mortgage, stuff like that and you can't really afford to invest lots of money in the stock market. I mean, even investing $100, $200 a month or a week in there is better than investing nothing at all. So just trying to invest what works best for you, what falls what falls into the money you can, you can spare to put in the market, um, is better than literally putting nothing in the stock market at all. There's so many people I talk to who just don't put money in the stock market because they don't think it's enough money. They don't think it will ever benefit them, but a small amount can go a, little, a long way. I started my account at zero dollars and it's grown to the hundred thirty thousand dollars in two years, two years and four months to be exact. I started this M1 account September 2021 and you see where it's at right now. A pretty solid amount in my book. So I'll take it. A pretty solid growth rate. And the third piece, like I mentioned, is trying not to get over leverage in the stock market. So obviously, if you went through the downturn of 2022, um, like I did, 
I wasn't prepared for a pullback or a downturn like that going into 2022. So I didn't have enough cash set aside like I would have liked to. So when the market was going down pretty drastically, it impacted me much more than it should because I wasn't really prepared in the position I wanted to be in. So now going forward for me, especially, I mean, this piece of advice is for myself as well. I try to keep a decent amount of cash on hand around like 20, 40 ish thousand dollars. It's just in case the market ever goes through another downturn, I'm prepared. Um, I'm able to dollar cost average in more aggressively if I need to. And I won't be getting scared or nervous if the market goes down because I have cash set aside. I'm out to start selling stocks if the market keeps pulling back because I'm running low or something like that. So just try to keep your money diversified, have a plan you're following and don't get over leveraged in the stock market. Um, just put what you can in the stock market. If it goes down, it goes down. If it goes up, it goes up. That's all I can, that's the three things I can really provide you with in this video. So if you guys learn anything, you found any value from the video, be sure to drop a thumbs up and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.